Hello everyone, welcome back. In Java, when we have multiple threads running for a particular program, then sometimes all those threads need to work together or share some information. Inter-thread communication is a way for threads to talk to each other and coordinate their actions. This helps ensure that they don't interfere with each other or do things out of order. We will see how two threads can communicate with each other using two main mechanism, wait and notify. Now without any further delay, let's start. For inter-thread communication, we will discuss two mechanisms or methods which are available in object class itself. Let's first discuss wait method. This method allows a thread to stop and wait for a particular signal from other thread before it can continue its work again. One thing we need to notice here is that we can only call wait method from a synchronized block or method. Let's try to understand why do we need to do that. When we call a wait method, it forces the thread to release its lock. Now to release a lock, first it must acquire a particular lock on a particular object before calling the wait method. And to obtain a particular lock, thread must be either synchronized method or in synchronized block. So this is the reason why we can only call wait method from synchronized block or method only. I hope the working of wait method is clear to you. In case you have any doubt, please let me know in the comment section. Now before we continue, if you have missed any of the previous videos on multithreading, please check it out from the playlist link given in the description. Now let us move to the second mechanism which is notify method and notify all method. These methods are used to wake up the waiting threads. So when we call a wait method, the thread releases the log and enters into either waiting state or timed waiting state. So depending on whether we have directly called the wait method or it is called with some kind of timeout. So depending on that, either it will be entering into waiting state or timed waiting state. In that particular state, it will keep on waiting for a signal to wake up. That signal is sent through using notify or notify all calls on the currently running threads. And once that happened, then it will attempt to reacquire the lock which it has released when the wait was called and continue its execution from where it left off. So why does we have two different methods notify and notify all? What is the main difference between them? Think of notify as a way to wake up one specific thread. It wakes up just one waiting thread if there is any and allows it to proceed further. On the other hand, notify all is like shouting to wake up all the waiting threads in the thread pool, saying that everyone wake up, it's time to continue. It allows all the waiting threads to compete for the lock and continue their execution. So any thread in from the thread pool which is in waiting state able to acquire the lock will continue its execution. So the question arises when to go for notify and notify all. You can use notify when it doesn't matter which waiting thread gets you continue and any of them can handle the work. And you can use notify all when you want to make sure that all waiting threads have a fair chance to compete for the lock and continue their work. This can help preventing situations where some threads might remain waiting indefinitely or starving for the CPU. Using notify can be more efficient in some cases, but it may require careful design to ensure that your program function correctly and fairly. On the other hand, notify is a safer choice when there is uncertainty about which thread should proceed or when the fairness is essential, you can use notify all. Now enough with the discussion, let's implement one scenario where we will use wait and notify for two threads communication. So the scenario is like this, we have a message sender thread and a message reader thread and we have a resource message buffer which will store and handle the exchange of messages between sender and reader. The reader will keep on waiting until sender sends a message in the buffer and once sender sends the message in buffer then sender will enter the waiting state until the reader actually read the message from buffer. 
that means the sender thread will keep on waiting until there is one unread message in the buffer available and the reader thread will keep on waiting until there is no unread method available in the buffer. So in this way both the threads should be coordinating with each other and that we will implement using wait and notify. Let's quickly start and see the coding example. I'll explain it in the steps. Here we have a message buffer class that contains two instance variables. One is of type string that stores the actual message content and second one is of type boolean which will tell if there is any unread message available in the buffer or not. Now let us see the send message requirement implementation as well. Here we have a synchronized send message method which accepts one string parameter. In this we are checking if the flag of message available is true that means sender has already sent the message so it will enter the wait state and it will remain there till reader reads the sent message and signal notify back to it. Once it receives the notify signal from reader then it will update the message content and set the message available flag back to true. After that we are printing that sent message in the console and notify the waiting reader thread to continue. Now let us also see the read message requirement implementation as well. Here we have this read message method which is also a synchronized method. Here in this method instead of checking if message available flag is true we are checking if message available flag is false. Then if it is false then the reader thread will go into waiting state. Why? Because at that point there is no pending message available in the message buffer. That means the sender has not sent any message yet which is already read by the reader thread. So the reader thread has to wait for sender to send the message. And as you can see in the send message method after sending the message the sender thread will call the notify so that the reader thread can continue its further processing. So in the read message once the message is processed it will again update the message available to false and notify back to the sender thread so that sender can send the next method that reader thread has already read the pending messages now sender will be able to send any new message in the message buffer. So that was the complete handling of sending and reading the message. Now let's create some threads and test out the implementation also. So for that we have thread communication demo which is our client class where we are creating sender thread which will send 10 different messages in the message buffer by calling the send message in this. And similarly we have a reader thread that will read those 10 messages using buffer.read message. And after defining both of these threads in the end we are starting both the threads. So what exactly we are expecting here? In this the sender should only be able to send the message in message buffer when it does not have any unread or pending message. Similarly the reader thread can only read the message once there is any pending or unread message available in the message buffer. So in a way both the threads should communicate with each other and sender thread should tell the reader thread after sending the message and reader thread should also notify the sender thread after reading the pending message. So in that way both the threads will be communicating and coordinating with each other. Now let us run this code and see if we are able to achieve this target. So from the output we can see that the first message message 0 was sent and until that message 0 was not read the next message which was message 1 was not sent by the sender thread. So once the message is received and read by the reader thread only after that the second or the next message is sent by the sender thread. This ensures that the sender and reader threads work together without conflicts and in the correct order. 
The example demonstrates simple inter-thread communication between sender and receiver using shared resources. I hope this concept is clear to you and if you find it useful please give us a like and share it with your friends. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next week with another interesting concept from Java Multithreading. Till then keep learning.